On this once forbidding slope, now a garden gracefully directs water to terraces of fruits, vegetables, herbs, and ornamentals. We grew up in New Hampshire in a rural area, and um, there was always stuff to eat around. Apples were huge, um, grapes were huge. In their new Austin garden, Suzanne and John Shore wanted it all flowers, wildlife, and food. When he was in medical school too, we canned the first two years we had a community garden. And uh, so we would trade, uh, we had lots of potatoes, just lots of veg vegetables. To fill their kitchen with varieties geared for Central Texas, especially on unwelcoming terrain, the Shores got help from designer Rosemary Vincent and her son, landscape architect Kellen Vincent. I think it's a, a really interesting combination. You know, everybody wants some excitement. And for what we're trying to do here and tried to do with John and Suzanne was to, to at least give them color and something fruiting or flowering, you know, year round almost. Not only do you have the color, but you have the fragrance. Of course, you have the fruit, and you know, that's exciting too, and the vegetables. We believe that, you know, when you come into a landscape, you need to have something to do. Something's going on, something, something exciting to look at. But first, the slope and its drainage problems demanded attention. I was looking at it and, then, and saying, you know, what if, what if we could kind of terrace it? We started researching, you know, how much it would take to build stone steps and retaining walls like you normally would in a uh, historical piece. Although Kellen wanted to reflect the Tuscany style of the home's architecture, he also favored a design to connect its Austin roots. Plus, since restrictions on impervious cover negated stone, he found his solution with grassy steps retained by steel. Everything that's being used as retainage structure is actually quarter inch steel, so then you didn't have the footprint that you would for stones. His design collects, diverts, and allows percolation of rainwater back into the soil, fending off erosion. Visually, he and Rosemary also wanted to soften and contrast the linearity. Historically, uh, villa gardens are axial, so they're, they're symmetrical on both sides. Based on the character of the house, they didn't want to go a full classical historical villa garden, and plus they're used a lot. So we took that general symmetry, kept that, but we wanted some more contemporary shapes. I think that, that the curvature and the different shapes and how they work together gives you kind of a flow. And the way that the garden is laid out, and you can walk around uh, any time of the day. I like to come out in the morning when the sun's just coming up and bring a cup of coffee out. And we have several different places where you can just sit and, and listen to the birds. They're singing like mad and eating our berries. Perhaps scaring them all. <laughs> so, uh, it, but, you know, and then in the evening, we'll come out in the evening and, and kind of work in the garden a little bit after I get home from work. And, and so it's, it's, that's very peaceful. It's very quiet. There's not a lot of the noise around here, not a lot of traffic, and that's also really, really nice. We want a Texas feeling to it, uh, not wild altogether, but controlled wild, if that makes any sense to you. And we're informal people, uh, so this, this just works for us. We wanted color. You know, we wanted a mixture so that we could have colors, and I was surprised last summer, which was our first summer to really have it, um, how much color there was here, even in the hottest part of the summer. I mean, mm -hmm. it just went all the way through, and that really surprised me. And in the fall, the whole top part turns bright red, and then the, there's a the yellow below it. I mean, it's so colorful, it's beautiful. It's hard to believe it's so thick and rich and colorful in the fall. Knockout roses plume a sitting area, shared with the lavender that Suzanne loves. We used to have this, I would uh, let it dry in the fall, and you bundle it with a really pretty satin ribbon and give those to friends, and I just love doing that. That's so much fun. Thanks to water and plant biodiversity, the gardens restored wildlife diversity too. I think one of the things that really surprised me last summer, because I happened to be out here sitting, Suzanne was away for the weekend, and I was just kind of out here by myself, and I was fascinated because we had about five hummingbirds. Oh, yeah. And the hummingbirds, you could just see them, you know, going crazy, and they'd hop from one thing to the yeah, next, they and they'd come back, and, and uh, it, that was really that was really kind of neat. I mean, I've seen hummingbirds before, but I'd never seen them that active and stay around that long, and, and so that was, uh, I enjoyed watching them. In front, Rosemary and Kellen gently framed the woods to ramble and reflect.
Joan saw its natural poetry as a transition of space and mind to bridge intensive responsibilities and leave them by the wayside before the homeward step. That actually was the first thing I asked uh, Rose Kellen yeah. about was, you know, is there some way that we can draw that in so you can walk down and then see the garden before you get to the garden. It's engineered so that uh, it draws you into the garden. I come out for 15 minutes, you know, and I look at my watch and go, oh no, it's an hour, you know, I'm already late for the rest of the day. At least for a bit, the rush of their world slows down. So after you've been, you know, three miles away in downtown Austin, to be able to come to this and, and just have this privacy and quiet and yes. solitude, it's, it's, it's really nice. It's very, very restful. Mm -hmm.